Hello and welcome to the Indian Agricultural Research Institute, the seat of Green Revolution. My name is A.K. Singh. I have been Basmati rice breeder at this institute for last 30 years. And very recently, I superannuated as director and vice chancellor of this institute. Viewers, today I am going to talk to you about the journey of Basmati rice. Basmati rice, as you know, is a scented rice. But generally, there is a perception that all aromatic rices or scented rices are basmati, which is not true. All basmati rices are aromatic, but all aromatic rices are not basmati. In addition to aroma, basmati is characterized by a certain unique feature. Of course, aroma is the most, foremost important characteristics of it. But in addition to aroma, basmati rice has got a milled rice length of about 6.7 millimeters or above. On cooking, rice elongates twice of its original length. The texture of rice is soft and fluffy. It doesn't stick with each other. And the property of sticking, uh, actually it comes from amylose. If amylose is intermediate, between 20-25% rice cooks very fluffy and that is the characteristics of basmati rice. If a mylose is more than 25%, rice tends to cook harder. And if it is less than 20%, it will become sticky. Now, basmati rice is a unique gift of mother nature to Indian subcontinent. The basmati rice in India is grown in seven states. They are Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Punjab, Haryana, Delhi, Western Uttar Pradesh, and Uttarakhand. These seven states have been earmarked as geographical indication for basmati rice. What does it mean? It means that when basmati rice varieties are produced in this specified region, then you get the best expression of basmati quality characteristics. Rice produced outside the GI region cannot be traded as basmati and uh, most of the times it loses its essential quality characteristics. However, there may be opportunities or chances that one can produce basmati rice outside GI area of the same quality, but still that rice will not be called as basmati because in addition to quality characteristics, what is most important for basmati rice is its heritage, public perception and history associated with that geographical region. And that is what is true with the seven states which I mentioned to you. Now, let's talk about what has been the main problem of traditional basmati rice varieties and why a genetic improvement of these was essentially required. The traditional basmati rice varieties are pretty tall, almost of my height. And during the grain formation, when there is wind, there is rain, often they will fall flat on the ground. Their stem is very weak and their duration is about 160 days. Because of these regions, the productivity of traditional basmati rice varieties like basmati 370, Traori basmati, and uh, Dehradouni basmati, etc. is very low, hardly 2.5 tons per hectare. Realizing this limitation of traditional basmati, Dr. M. S. Swaminathan, during late 60s when he was director of this institute, and that was the time, 67, 68, when the green revolution in wheat was taking place. Dwarf high yielding varieties of Mexican wheat were brought uh, with the help of Dr. Norman Borlaug at IRI and they were researched. Seed was being produced and multiplied and given to the farmers. It was during that period of late 60s, Dr. Swaminathan thought of combining the quality of traditional basmati into high yielding background. And uh, after 20 years, in 1989, we came out with the first semi-dwarf high yielding variety of basmati rice which was released in the name Pusha Basmati 1. This was a Herculean task because combining the quality of traditional basmati into high yielding background, it required several cycles of selective intermating and segregating generations where plants with essential basmati characteristics were selected, they were intermated and then uh, we try to identify the segregated, uh, the transgressive segregates with respect to basmati quality characters. So it was a very tough journey. And then in 1989, we released Pusa Basmati 1. Subsequently, in 2003, we came out with another blockbuster variety called Pusa Basmati 1121. 
This variety had a cooked kernel length of almost 24 millimeters, almost an inch. You can imagine very high volume expansion, 4.5 times of the original rice volume when you cook it. And this variety, together these varieties, they brought revolution in basmati rice cultivation and production. Subsequently, in 2007, we came out with Pusa Basmati 1401. Again, an excellent Basmati quality variety. And in 2013, we came out with Pusa Basmati 1509, a short duration variety, uh, which matures in just 120 days, uh, seed to seed, and allows farmers to take uh, multiple crops uh, with very high cropping intensity, increasing their profitability. These varieties, Pusa Basmati 1, Pusa Vasmati 1121, Pusa Vasmati 1401, and Pusa Vasmati 1509, they brought a revolution in Basmati rice production. However, as we know that when the area under a given variety or single variety increases, uh, there is uh, what we call as boom and burst cycle, they become susceptible to several insect pests and diseases, and so happened with these uh, varieties. And therefore, at IRI, we initiated a very systematic molecular breeding program to incorporate resistance to diseases, in particular bacterial blight and blast diseases in these high yielding basmati rice varieties. So, Pusa Basmati 1 was improved to develop improved Pusa Basmati 1 with resistance to bacterial blight. Pusa Basmati 1637 to develop resistance to blast disease and uh, Pusa Basmati 1882, which combined a QTL for drought tolerance from a land race Nagina 22, and therefore this variety could be grown under direct seeded condition. Likewise, Pusa Basmati 1121 was improved to develop Pusa Basmati 1718 with two genes for resistance to bacterial, bacterial leaf blight, XA13 and XA21, and subsequently Pusa Basmati 1885, which combined two genes for blight and two genes for blast. And they were essentially XA13, XA21 for blight and PIZ5 and PI54 for blast resistance. Pusa Basmati 1509 was further improved and we came out with Pusa Basmati 1847, a variety which again had blight and blast resistance. Likewise, Pusa Basmati 1401 was also improved for bacterial blight and blast resistance to develop Pusa Vasmati 1886. Now, all these high yielding varieties which have been developed in last, uh, uh, say about 20-25 uh, years, uh, combining resistance to biotic stresses, uh, collectively they are grown on an area of uh, almost 2 million hectares. And annually, we produce about 9 million tons of basmati rice, of which about 5.2 million tons is exported, bringing a forex of about 5.5 billion US dollar. If I take you back to the time when Pusa Basmati 1 was released, the total export of basmati rice from India was about 30 million dollar. So this journey from 30 million dollars to 5.5 billion US dollar annually is a remarkable journey. And this has brought a smile on the faces of millions of Basmati farmers. Very recently, we have come out with another uh, breakthrough uh, in Basmati rice research. We all know that rice is grown uh, in India in 44 million hectare, of which Basmati rice area is 2 million hectare, but all of it is mostly uh, cultivated by transplanting methods. Transplanting, as you know, that uh, soil is uh, plowed in presence of water, the operation what we call as puddling. And this operation takes a lot of water, almost 15 hectare centimeter water is required for puddling operation before which the field is ready uh, for uh, transplanting the seedlings. Now, this has been used as a uh, method of rice cultivation because it cultivate, it controls weeds very effectively. But if rice has to be cultivated this way, uh, you know, it takes a lot of water. Often it is said that to produce one kilogram of rice, about 3000 liters of water is required. Now, uh, this is therefore a water guzzler crop. If rice farming has to be made sustainable, we have to shift the rice farming from transplanted paddy to direct seeded rice, just like the wheat is sown.
We know that transplanted rice has several disadvantages. One, that is consumes more water. Second, transplanting cost of labor is very high and also it emits more of greenhouse gases. All these problems are taken care when we go for direct seeded rice. Then one would ask the question that why direct seeded rice is not becoming popular. Now one of the major reason uh, for a slow adoption of direct seeded rice is uh, the prevalence of weeds under direct seeded situations. The plots are full of weeds when we go for direct seeded rice and it takes lot of time for farmers to go for manual weeding or otherwise you know he will not get much yield. It also becomes very expensive. To control weeds effectively, now we have come out with the technology of non-GM herbicide tolerant rice. Two varieties of basmati rice, namely Pusa Basmati 1979, which is improved version of Pusa Basmati 1121, and Pusa Basmati 1985, which is improved version of Pusa Basmati 1509, have been developed. And both these varieties carry a mutant allele of a gene called ALS, acetolactate synthase. And this uh, mutant allele provides resistance, or I would say tolerance, to a herbicide called Imijathapir. Imijathapir is a broad range weed killer. It kills all weeds in rice paddy field, but if varieties are tolerant to this herbicide because of this mutation, nothing happens to the crop. As you will see in the visuals, the crop is completely protected from weeds and uh, uh, the absolutely uh, fantastic yields. We have taken these varieties to farmer's field. We have got a yield of almost uh, three tons per acre, uh, which is almost, uh, you know, uh, seven, seven and a half tons per hectare yield is being realized under direct seeded rice condition. So this is going to be a revolution, shifting cultivation from transplanted paddy to direct seeded rice uh, in basmati and also we are trying to incorporate this character into non-basmati varieties also. I am sure viewers you would have liked this uh, brief journey of basmati rice, how we have progressed from traditional basmati varieties which yielded 2.5 tons per hectare to the high yielding modern day varieties which are yielding about 7 tons per hectare. Duration has been reduced from 160 days to 120 days in modern day varieties and thus bringing, uh, you know, rice farming, making it more sustainable, making it more profitable for the farmers. Thank you very much.